to a series of explorations, encounters, and exchanges, a tiny group of Jews on the Caribbean Dutch island of St. Eustatius were able to play an important role in the colonists' victory in the Revolutionary War. The island of St. Eustatius was spotted by Christopher Columbus on a second journey to the New World in September of 1493. Columbus's goal was riches, but his exploration paved the way for future exploration and colonization in the coming centuries, and initiated the exchange of goods between the New and Old World. Ultimately, it was Columbus's exploration that unleashed a new era that would make it possible to found a democratic country, the United States of America. St. Eustatius, also referred to as Statia, is located in the Dutch-owned Windward Islands, about 150 miles southeast of the Virgin Islands. In 1756, the Dutch took advantage of the island's strategic location at the confluence of the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean by establishing St. Eustatius as the first of a series of free ports, ports open to all traders and exempt from taxes on the goods going through them. The island served as a safe haven to all who settled there. The Dutch society welcomed those that could enhance the island's commerce. As a result, the population of St. Eustatius surged to over 20,000 during the latter part of the 17th century and throughout the 18th century. Between 1640 and 1660, the first Jewish settlers arrived on St. Eustatius seeking refuge from persecution and exile. The influx continued with refugees from the Spanish Inquisition and Sephardic Jews forced to flee Brazil after the Spanish conquest of the country. From 1757 to 1813, Dutch authorities paid Portuguese Sephardic families to leave Amsterdam and immigrate to St. Eustatius. This turned out to be a very important decision. Throughout these years, more Jews would come and take on a variety of trades. They became ship owners, planters of sugarcane, and producers of rum and molasses. Over a hundred Jewish families came to constitute the core of the mercantile establishment on the island. As British Parliament member Edmund Burke said, the Jews were the links of communication, the mercantile chain, the conductors by which credit was transmitted through the world. And uh, what the Jewish merchants brought were these family connections uh, that extended across Europe. And they're also often multilingual, very cosmopolitan figures. The Jews were the ones who initiated the exchange that turned Stacia into the Western World's Emporium and earned the island the nickname, the Golden Rock. According to official port records, in 1779 more than 3,000 ships from around the world came to St. Eustatius to trade, and a total of 25 million pounds of sugar was shipped from the island. I mean, all, there are all these other islands there, the British, the French, they all had islands, they all had commercial ventures, but they all charged tariffs to protect their homeland. St. Eustatius had none of that, and that's why it flourished. Meanwhile, in the midst of St. Eustatius' economic success, on April 19, 1775, the first shots of the Revolutionary War were fired, and a little over a year later, on July 4, 1776, the United States declared its independence from Britain. These events were critical to the foundation of the United States. Three months later, an equally important but much lesser known encounter would occur on St. Eustatius. On October 23, 1776, the American brigantine Andrew Doria was dispatched on a diplomatic mission to deliver a copy of the Declaration of Independence to Stacia's governor, Johannes de Graaf, and return to the colonies with gunpowder and military supplies. The small but swift ship successfully ran the British blockade and got to the station port on November 16, 1776. Upon arrival, the Andrew Doria fired a 13-gun salute, announcing its arrival. Station's governor chose to order an 11-gun protocol correct reply. It was the salute heard around the world. It was the first international recognition of the struggling new American government in the former British colonies. The copy of the declaration was delivered, and the port authorities responded by loading the ship with munitions for delivery to the American rebels. The weapon-filled Andrew Doria proceeded to run the British blockade once again, successfully returning the armaments to Philadelphia. The encounter between the Andrew Doria and the port authorities, and the hundreds of shipments in the exchange that would follow, would play a pivotal role in helping this ragtag bunch of farmers achieve a victory over the rich, well-supplied, well-trained, and powerful British army. The weapons were pretty well critical to the victory because um, they didn't make gunpowder in North America and uh, you know, they couldn't produce guns in sufficient numbers.
But this wasn't the last time St. Eustatius would prove critical to the outcome of the revolution. In 1781, yet another history-making encounter would occur, when the British finally realized that the colonists' lifeline from St. Eustatius would have to be severed. On January 27, 1781, Britain declared war on Holland, and to stop the colonists' weapons supply, they sent 15 warships with more than 10,000 navy men and 3,000 marines to St. Eustatius. This would prove to be a major logistical flaw, as they sent far more troops than necessary to overthrow the lone Dutch frigate defending Statia. The British fleet was led by Admiral Sir George Rodney. Rodney had a personal hatred for St. Eustatius, as he once wrote to his wife, This rock has done England more harm than all the arms of her most potent enemies. The massive British force easily overwhelmed Stacia's 61 soldiers. Rodney's forces captured more than 150 ships and proceeded to plunder the island, pilfer traders' belongings, and send American prisoners back to England. There, there was no militia, there was no army, there was no, no physical opposition to it at all, and then he just acted to punish him. Although his treatment of those he encountered was vicious, it paled in comparison to his severe treatment of the Jews. The Jews were expelled from their homes without warning. The men were locked in a way house. After three days, 30 were deported to St. Kitts, and the remainder were released just in time to witness the auction of all of their belongings and properties. Rodney's encounter with St. Eustatius resulted in the demise of Statia's once prosperous Jewish community. The Jews quickly went from thriving families to families torn apart, homeless, without possessions, and full of despair. After looting the last of the warehouses, Rodney burnt St. Eustatius to the ground and destroyed all of the island's records. The Jewish population never recovered from Rodney's attacks. Um, yeah, for helping our old friends, because we still have them as friends, they visit the islands, people from America come here, and as tourists. I think we paid a price, but um, to us nowadays, uh, you can talk about it, but it's history. And I think our people are still proud to know that our forefathers could have assisted in helping a big one, the, the most powerful nation today in the world, to help them to get to their freedom. So it's a big honor. Despite the misfortune faced by the Jews, the encounter between Rodney's forces and the Jews of St. Eustatius was a decisive factor in the outcome of the Battle of Yorktown, the final battle of the revolution. As a result of Rodney's single-minded focus on the station Jews, he not only missed the opportunity to intercept the French fleet headed from the Caribbean to reinforce the Americans at Yorktown, but he also kept a significant portion of the British Navy occupied. By focusing not just, of course, on rounding up um, the Jewish inhabitants, but also on auctioning uh, the goods that he'd seized at St. Eustatius. That does, um, that completely distracts him. What is even more important is that um, in positioning his fleet, he positioned it, it seems, largely to protect sending his treasure trove home, and rather than with a view to what was best to intercept a grass. The French fleet's arrival at the mouth of the Chesapeake provided General George Washington the support needed to trap Britain's General Cornwallis. Without the 15,000 troops under Rodney's command, Cornwallis was forced to surrender to the combined French and American forces. Among the events contributing to the eventual foundation of the United States were the exploration resulting in the discovery of Stasia, the exchange between the Jewish merchants and the American rebels, and the encounter with Admiral Rodney. The Jews played a central role in the weapon exchange, and their efforts to keep the colonists armed allowed the revolutionary soldiers to stay in the fight. The Jews' ultimate contribution to the success of the war was not made voluntarily. When Rodney came to St. Eustatius to stop the weapon exchange, his encounter with the Jews and his personal obsession in destroying them directly led to Britain's defeat. But uh, there's no question this island played a disproportionate role and the Jewish merchants on it uh, were a very key component.